Welcome back to Street Smart. Let's check back in with Adam Johnson, who's at the Strategus Macro Conference in New York. He's sitting down with Lee Cooperman, founder of Omega Advisors. Adam, all yours. Hey, thanks, Carol. Talk about a legend. We're so glad to be here. Lee, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. You wrote a letter to your investors at the tail end of last year. You said in order to be bullish for 2011, you needed three things to be in place. What were those three things, and has anything changed since? Well, a very reasonable question, and I said to be bullish in 2011, you had to be positive on three issues. Issue number one was that the United States was not another Japan. I'm talking about Japan pre-earthquake, meaning that we were not getting into 10 years of stagnant economic activity, that we were in the early stages of a new business recovery, and that recovery would become self-sustaining. We were willing to make that assumption. In a minute, I'll tell you, we feel comfortable with that. Second, we said that you had to believe that the ECB, European Central Bank, would do for European financial institutions what the U.S. Central Bank, the Fed, did for domestic financial institutions meaning provide aid and assistance to help these troubled countries uh, with their problems. And we think Germany and the ECB will do what has to be done. And the third assumption was that the president would become less anti-wealth, less, less uh, anti-business, move to the center, and he got that message in the midterm elections, and that's happening. So we felt very comfortable those three uh, uh, factors would come into place. Uh, the fourth one, which is new, uh, is the uh, instability in the Middle East. And what I would say is if what's going on in the Middle East is all about democracy, that's a wonderful thing. If it's something more sinister, that could become problematic for the market. And the only, I have no particular expertise in that fourth factor, so what I'm doing is monitoring it by the price of oil. And I think the U.S. economy can handle Brent to, say, 125, maybe 130. And if it gets much beyond that, uh, if you look, historically, oil shocks have induced recessions. So I'm not calling for recession. We're calling for decent economic growth, 3-plus percent. Uh, for 2011, but this fourth area is a bit of a wild card. But those are our assumptions, and we feel comfortable with those assumptions, and there are a number of other factors worth mentioning as well. Like? Well, number two would be valuation. Uh, the stock market today is around 13 and a half, maybe 14 times the consensus estimate of earnings. Uh, uh, historically, it's been about 15. In the last 50 years, when the multiple in the market was 15, 10-year government bond rates were 6. They're currently 3.3. Three. Uh, uh, when multiples in the market were, uh, uh, when, when inflation, I should say, was in the range of 1 to 3 percent historically, the market multiple was like 17. Today, it's 13 and a half. So when we look at the, the, uh, the marketplace, we see stock today is cheap relative to their own history. 13 and a half times earnings. Yeah, cheap versus relative to bonds. Rel cheap relative to bonds and interest rates generally, and cheap relative to inflation. And thirdly, uh, generally what, what hurts you in the next business cycle is not what hurt you in the last cycle. And I think people are very fearful, given the magnitude of the losses of 2008, the uh, imbalances in our fiscal policy. And uh, uh, so when you look at it, the individual today is 20 percent stocks of their financial assets. They used to be 25 percent. Pension plans are 50 percent stocks. They used to be 65 percent. Money fund balances pay zero, but they're still relatively high. So, and you got good profits, good economic growth. If you don't mind me quoting, the CEO of Caterpillar came out yesterday, and I quote, business is booming outside of the United States and steadily improving in the United States. About a month ago, in one of your competitive networks, I'm sure you got more competitors than you like to have, uh, uh, Jeff Inmelt was on, and he said that uh, GE's business is getting better every day. And Warren Buffett, who is the CEO, basically, of a couple hundred billion dollar enterprise, is saying the same thing. So I think you got good valuations, conservative posture, good economy. And I'll only point out one last thing before we go to the next area, and that is when an economic expansion gets going in the post war period, the average economic expansion has lasted about five years. We're only a year and a half into a new economic economic expansion, so I think we're relatively early on in a new cycle, and I think all this argues reasonably well for the equity market, particularly given valuations. Okay, Lee, real quick, 30 seconds, maybe only 20, it's not fair, what's the top pick? Give us a name. Uh, I, 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 it's like you asked me for my best-looking child, and I got two of them, so I can't can't respond. But we, I, uh, if I, if I asked my team what they like, they'd say Apple Computer, Ace in Insurance, uh, BP in Energy, Citrix in the Computers, CVS uh, Caremark in uh, Healthcare, Discovery Communications, very interesting uh, company. Is great. There is no shortage of cheap stocks. Uh, Lee Cooperman, we could go on and on. We're here at the Strategus Global Macro Conference.